overcome what's holding you back, and live the life you dream of. As a trained psychotherapist, Amy Morin is used to helping those that are struggling. But in the year 2013, she was struggling herself. She had lost both her mom and her husband. And then, after remarrying, she learned that her new father-in-law was diagnosed with cancer. She called it her lowest point in life. Close to a breaking point, she sat down and wrote a letter to herself. In it, she made a list with 13 things that mentally strong people don't do. Later, she shared it on her blog. The article went viral and ultimately reached 50 million people. One year later, she made it into a book that became a bestseller and was translated into 40 languages. Hi, I'm Speed Reads, and I'm going to talk you through the key points of Amy Morin's 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. In the upcoming 13 lessons, we're going to hear from 13 real-life examples about 13 different bad habits and how those bad habits were replaced by better ones. Mentally strong people replace self-pity with gratitude. This way, we'll stack up your personal toolbox for life's notorious hardships. So without further ado, let's get started. In the first lesson, we'll see why feeling sorry for yourself is a waste of time. To dive right into it, we'll kick things off with a little fender bender. One day, Amy Morin witnessed a minor accident. Two cars in a supermarket parking lot were backing up and bumped into each other. Morin watched the two drivers get out of the car, and she couldn't help noticing something. Even though those drivers just experienced the same accident, their reactions couldn't have been more different. The first driver got out and looked almost relieved. How lucky he was that no one was seriously hurt. How miraculous that this hadn't led to a serious injury. The second driver, however, felt rather unlucky. Oh, great, he moaned, just exactly what he needed. Why does this BS always happen to him? So why am I telling you this? It's because the second driver is a perfect example of the first behavior that mentally strong people don't do. He is pitying himself. He is sulking, dwelling in his misfortune, throwing a pity party. People who pity themselves tend to think their problems are much worse. They complain that life is not fair, and when you ask them how their day went, they will readily hand you a list of all the things that went wrong. But as common as it is, it's also a problem. Because feeling sorry for yourself can be, well, quite self-destructive. You're not only wasting your time, you're also training your mind to focus on the negatives, which will make you more miserable, and this will in turn make you focus even more on the downsides. Meanwhile, all the good luck and positive experiences pass by unnoticed. So yes, self-pity is destructive, but how can you stop? Well, the most effective antidote is gratitude. If you're stuck in a mindset of, bad things are always happening to me, just stop for a second. Sit down and write a list of the good things that have happened to you. To make it more regular, you can also keep a gratitude journal. All you have to do is write down at least one thing you are grateful for per day. Also, it helps to say it out loud. Tell the people around you what life has gifted you. Sooner or later, you might find yourself in the mindset of the first driver. Mentally strong people hold on to their power and forgive others. Instead of complaining about a minor accident, you'll actually feel thankful that nothing worse has happened, which brings you one step closer to becoming a mentally strong person. Welcome to lesson number two. Here we're going to learn how mentally strong people retain control over their life. Let's meet Lauren, a loving mother of two. She nearly had a picture-perfect family life if it wasn't for one thing, her mother-in-law. Lauren found her overbearing. Not only would she come over unannounced, she constantly criticized Lauren's parenting style and even made nasty comments about her weight. Lauren always kept a polite smile on the outside, but was boiling on the inside. And it was not only that her mother-in-law occupied precious family time, Lauren also found herself ruminating and complaining about her at least several hours per week. Clearly something was wrong. Which brings us to the second habit that mentally strong people don't do. They don't let other people have power over them. This was the core of Lauren's problem. Because she was afraid of speaking up, she let her mother-in-law control how she felt and behaved. There are many ways in which this habit can manifest. 
If you're susceptible to other people's criticism, if you let other people make you angry, if other people can guilt you into doing something you don't want to do, it's a sign that you give others power over you. So how do you take back control over your life? Let's take another look at Lauren. After she realized how much time and energy she spent on complaining about her mother-in-law, she sat down with her husband. They decided to set respectful but clear and healthy boundaries. So they had a talk with her. They told her that instead of her dropping by unannounced, they would regularly invite her for dinner. They also demanded that she stop criticizing Lauren's parenting style. Mentally strong people are always ready to embrace change. In the beginning, it was hard for her mother-in-law to adapt, but she managed. And Lauren got back control over her family home and her life. Here we are at lesson number three, looking at how mentally strong people handle change. Richard was frustrated. He just got diagnosed with diabetes and his doctor told him he was 75 pounds overweight. So he felt like he needed to make a change, which was easier said than done. He made a pledge to abstain from any sort of junk food. He even cleared his shelves of all the cookies and sugary drinks. He signed up for the gym. All of this sounded like a good plan on paper. In real life, though, he soon found himself snacking in front of the TV instead of exercising. Despite all the best intentions, he didn't lose a single pound. Let's face it, making a change is difficult. But if you lack the mental strength, it's easy to shy away from it. But this comes at a heavy price. Without change, you can feel like you're stuck while others are outgrowing you. So how do mentally strong people approach change? First and foremost, they avoid the single biggest pitfall, overwhelming yourself with too much change at once. This is what happened with Richard. His methods were just too radical, too unrealistic. This way he set himself up for failure. Instead, try these two tips. First, break down your ambition into smaller, more reachable goals. Face radical change with incremental change. This is what Richard learned to do. Instead of wanting to lose 75 pounds at once, he now strived to lose 5 pounds as a first step. And secondly, make a plan. This means you craft concrete action steps that are easy to follow. For example, Richard started a food journal to keep track of his eating and prepared lunch instead of eating out. He planned out three gym visits per week in advance, and for the other days, he made a pledge to go for a short walk with his family after dinner. So now we know how mentally strong people handle change. They avoid the scary all-or-nothing change, and instead they craft smaller and more realistic goals and attach concrete actions to it that they can do daily. Mentally strong people don't get distracted by things they can't control. You can make change so unscary that shying away from it is simply not an option anymore. Which brings us to lesson number four, where we're looking at how mentally strong people handle things out of their control. One day, James wanted to spend an afternoon whale watching with his daughter. Such dates had become a rare and cherished occasion. After the divorce from his wife Carmen, she was granted primary custody while James was only allowed to see her on Wednesdays and weekends. To make things even more complicated, the divorced parents were competing over their daughter's favor, trying to trump one another with gifts and fun activities. So when he learned from his daughter that her mom had taken her on a whale-watching trip just the week prior, supposedly to ruin their whale-watching trip, James was infuriated. Instead of enjoying the rare quality time with his daughter, he sent angry text messages to his ex-wife. The afternoon was ruined. So what exactly are we witnessing here? It's this. James got unnecessarily upset about something that was outside his control. But like most people, James loves to have full control over the situation. This includes telling people what and what not to do. This just made the situation worse, spoiling the already rare quality time with his daughter. Mentally strong people, on the other hand, develop a balanced sense of control. They have a good grip on what they can and cannot control, and therefore invest their time and energy more wisely. The first step here is clear. You need to acknowledge that there are some things you won't be able to change. For example, you won't be able to force your child to be an A-plus student. You can't force people to follow your advice. 
you cannot control illnesses or the weather. Once you've accepted that some things are out of your control, you can focus on what's actually in your sphere of influence. And then you can make the best out of the circumstances. Which brings us back to James. Soon he realized he won't be able to change his ex-wife and also has no power over how she spends her time with their daughter. What he could do is make the best out of his time with his daughter. Always wanting to please others doesn't work and being ready to sometimes displease makes you stronger. So instead of complaining or dragging his ex-wife to court over custody, he learned to be more present and enjoy every bit he gets to have with his daughter. So this is now lesson number five, where we'll learn how mentally strong people balance their own needs with other people's needs. This time, let's say hi to Megan. Megan had a relatable problem. She felt constantly stressed. The to-do seemed to pour in from all sides. Church members asked her to quickly bake some muffins for Sunday service, her sister needed her as a babysitter, and her cousin always came over with some last-minute favor to ask. Soon it became clear that Megan's stress had a particular reason. It was because she had a hard time saying no. Or in other words, she was a people pleaser. Being nice is, well, nice, but it becomes a problem if you're being too nice. First of all, people who tend to be too nice can be easily taken advantage of. Since they hate to disagree, they will rather say yes than risk a conflict. Not only are they constantly concerned about what other people think about them, they will also go to great lengths to change their behavior so they appear more likable, often at the expense of their own desires and wishes. It's not hard to guess what's wrong with this sort of behavior. If you always focus on other people's needs, you're not going to get your own needs met. Not only is it extremely stressful, it can also damage your relationships. That's what happened with Megan. Because she always said yes to the short-term requests of her cousin, she grew frustrated and behaved irritably towards her own family. Sometimes she'd even miss dinner or couldn't put her kids to bed. So if you find yourself to be an overly agreeable person, what can you do? Here are two tips. Tip number one is that you have to realize one thing. It's not your job to make everybody happy all the time. It's okay if someone else feels mad or upset. It's not the end of the world. They're grown-ups and they learn how to cope with negative emotions just as you did. Tip number two is a rather practical one. If someone asks you for a favor, take some time before you say yes or no. This is actually what the author told Megan. Whenever someone asked her for something, she felt pressed and automatically said yes even if she didn't want to. So Morin gave her a script, something she could easily respond with in those situations. For example, when someone asked her for a favor, she said something like this. Thanks for asking. Mentally strong people are not afraid of taking calculated risks. Let me check my calendar and then I'll get back to you in a bit. This way, she bought herself some time, which makes it easier to say this small but powerful word with two letters, no. All right, this means we're at lesson number six now. If you want to know how mentally strong people manage risks, this one's for you. When Dale told his wife about an old dream of his, opening up his own furniture store, he was met with a good amount of eye rolling. Oh, what a dreamer he was. And he agreed. Why would he give up his stable job as a high school teacher for a risky undertaking like this? So he kept on working in the same old job. The only problem, the more he tried to forcefully repress his true aspiration, the more frustrated he grew. Even worse, he felt defeated and depressed. He found himself stuck in a dilemma. What should he do? So let's take a deeper look at this and see how mentally strong people handle risks. Like Dale, most people are naturally averse to risk-taking. They're afraid of making certain decisions, often entertaining worst-case scenarios in their head. But instead of fulfilling their wishes, they end up on the couch ruminating what life could have had in store for them if only they dared to do X and Y. So what do mentally strong people do differently? Here's the answer. They take calculated risks. They do this in two steps. First, they get a full and realistic picture about the potential dangers and benefits involved. They ask themselves, what is the worst thing that can happen? Also, what is the best thing that can happen? 
Second, they find a way to appropriately adjust the risks involved. Too many people approach life decisions with an all-or-nothing attitude. Either I'll become a famous rock star or I'll be a loser forever, they cry out loud. But don't be overly dramatic. There's a middle way. And that's exactly what Dale did. He realized it's not an either-or decision. He can have the safety of his daytime job and the excitement of running his own business at the same time. All he had to do was start his furniture shop on a part-time basis, working on evenings and weekends. And instead of buying a whole store, he could sell his creations online. If there was enough interest, he could open a storefront later on. Coming to terms with the past makes you stronger, but it takes concrete steps to do so. His mood immediately improved. After all, he did what mentally strong people naturally do. He took a calculated risk. Okay, we're at lesson number seven now. This time we'll answer the question of how mentally strong people handle their past. Gloria's relationship with her 28-year-old daughter was more than difficult. It became clear to Gloria that her daughter was stuck in a loop of self-destructive behavior, constantly switching boyfriends, not holding down a job and moving back in with her. But instead of saying anything, she even enabled it with her well-meaning behavior. Why? Because she felt guilt and shame over how she wasn't really there for her daughter when she was younger. So now she wanted to make up for it. In other words, she was so stuck in the past that she couldn't move forward. If there's something we can learn from Gloria's story, it's this. If you want to become mentally stronger, you should stop dwelling on your past. This habit comes in many forms. It can mean you're replaying certain scenes from your past over and over. You're wondering how your life would have turned out if you had taken this one job. Or you assume that getting back with your ex-lover will solve all your problems. Yes, a certain amount of retrospective reflection is healthy, but too much of it can be destructive. How do you stop then, you might ask yourself. Well, here's the trick. Instead of dwelling on your past, you should come to terms with it and then move forward. The first step here is acceptance. You've got to realize that no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to change what has happened. This may also mean that you forgive someone who has inflicted pain on you. And second, move forward. Shift your thoughts onto something new and do this with intention. When you notice how your thoughts are spiraling back to past events, make an effort to replace those thoughts. For example, start making plans for your next vacation. Even better, come up with new goals for your future. The more you get yourself in a habit of thinking about the future, the harder it will become for your brain to go back to the past. Hence, you stop dwelling on it. All right, we're halfway through and this was a lot to take in. So let's take a bit of time to reflect. So far, we've been talking quite a lot about habits, but we haven't really acknowledged that habits can come in many shapes and forms. Take Gloria from the lesson before. It was her thinking that was problematic as her thoughts were so stuck in the past. This was different from Richard from lesson number three, who found himself snacking in front of the TV, even though he wanted to lose weight. Here you're talking about habitual behavior. And remember James, who got so upset that his ex-wife took their daughter on a whale-watching trip before he did. Well, his bad habits were all about emotions. The point here is, if you want to develop your mental strength, you need to be aware of these three levels of mental strength, thoughts, behavior, and emotions. Some bad habits start out on one level and then have a tendency to spill over. But it also works the other way around. If you start improving one of those three, it will affect the other two. Mentally strong people avoid repeating the same mistakes, and this requires self-discipline. They're all intertwined. Okay, lesson learned. So now let's get back to the lessons. Now let's continue with lesson number eight, where we're going to learn how mentally strong people avoid repeating the same old mistakes. For some change of tone, let's start with a rather inspiring example this time. Let's take a little time machine to a small town in mid-19th century Massachusetts. We're with the businessman Roland Macy, who just launched a dry goods store, but made quite a fatal mistake. The location he chose was way too quiet, and he struggled to attract customers as a result. 
To drum up interest in his fledgling store, Macy organized a large parade through his town that would end up at his shop. Unfortunately, on the day of the parade, it was so blazing hot that nobody turned up. He fell so deep into debt that he had to give up his business. But Macy learned from this experience and vowed not to make the same mistake again. The next time he opened up a Macy dry goods store, he chose a prime location in downtown New York. It was a massive hit. The rest is history. Macy's became one of the biggest chain stores in the world and still holds a parade every year, just in the fall, to avoid the heat. What Roland Macy did here is another characteristic of mentally strong people. They study and learn from their mistakes so they don't repeat them in the future. To learn from your mistakes the next time something goes wrong, you can take some time to ask yourself the following questions. What did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And what can I do differently next time around? Of course, knowing what you need to do differently and actually doing it is not the same thing. This is why, if you want to put a stop to the bad habits once and for all, you need to practice self-discipline. Here are three simple methods to become a more disciplined person. First, keep your eyes on your goal. By picturing how great it will feel once you've reached it, like how amazing it will feel once you've put the finishing touches on your novel, it will be easier to sit down to write on evenings when you feel like just dropping down in front of the TV. Second, make a list of mistakes you've made in the past that you don't want to repeat. Carry this list with you at all times, and when you feel like you're about to repeat a mistake, take it out and read it to yourself. And third, make it harder to make mistakes. Let's say your goal is to save money for a dream trip, but you always end up spending too much money when you're out with your friends. Mentally strong people don't envy other people's success, but rather seek to collaborate with them. Before you leave home for an outing, take a small amount of cash out and leave your credit card at home. That way, you're less likely to go on a spending spree. And this brings us to lesson number nine. Here we'll take a look at how mentally strong people defy the destructive habit of resentment. Let's change things up again and start with a study. So if you ever got grumpy while browsing through your peers' seemingly perfect lives on social media, this one might be for you. In 2013, researchers published a study with the telling title, Envy on Facebook, a Hidden Threat to Users' Life Satisfaction. The result? People can get really bummed out to see other people's successes and happiness. Being exposed to your peers' vacation photos is particularly bad, and they can even get angry over a lot of birthday wishes. If that sounds relatable to you, behold, this feeling is called resentment, and you guessed it, it's something mentally strong people don't do. If you feel like other people are more successful than you, you'll likely feel envious about their good fortune. On the outside, you might keep a polite smile, but when your neighbor shows you his brand new Tesla, you might secretly despise him. You were just about to enjoy this garden party, but now your mood is ruined. Often people's resentments are a sign of their own insecurities, and it's particularly easy to resent other people's accomplishments if you don't really know what you want yourself. Let's say you've got a friend who's flying all over the world for important business trips and your first thought is, I wish I could have that lifestyle. But do you? Didn't you wish you had more family time before? Now what is it that you want? A jet set life or more family time? So what do you do? First of all, you need to gain clarity about what success and accomplishment looks like to you. If your New Year's resolution is to bike more often to work, you'll have a hard time despising your neighbor's new car. You wouldn't even want his car in the first place. Case closed. Another way to get rid of resentful emotions is a change of attitude. Life's not a rat race in which you perpetually have to outperform everybody around you. Instead of competing, think more about collaborating. Mentally strong people don't give up easily, and they are self-compassionate about failure. Yes, you might be secretly angry about your brother's financial success, but why not ask him for some tips and learn from him? It's hard to resent someone who's about to help you out, isn't it? We're at lesson number 10 now, looking at how perseverance is the key to long-term success. Again, let's start with a positive example, namely Mr. Thomas Edison. Today, Edison is world famous for inventing the light bulb. 
Did you know that he also came up with contraptions like the electric pen or the so-called ghost machine? If you've never heard of these, don't worry. Both were complete failures. And they were far from being Edison's only flops, at least from our perspective. Edison himself didn't consider these attempts to be failures. Instead, he saw them as learning opportunities, chances to experiment with what worked and what didn't. Each time he failed, he considered himself to be one step closer to succeeding. But yeah, this is not the common perspective on failure. If you drop out of college or lose an important client, your go-to reaction is not, finally, another learning opportunity. The opposite is true. It often comes with a sense of shame, an experience we want to avoid at all costs. As a consequence, some people will stop trying entirely, making it a habit to give up at the faintest sign of hardship. Obviously, giving up is not an option if you want to develop your mental strength. How do you deal with it, then? We have two tips in store. First, get rid of unhealthy beliefs about success and failure. In the face of resistance, it's easy to make excuses that you're just not talented enough. Well, not true. Science has it that regular practice will trump natural talent. If you just put in enough hours, you'll most likely overtake anyone who doesn't. Same goes for IQ. IQ is a rather lousy predictor of success. Yes, being smart might give you a head start, but perseverance has shown to be way more important when it comes to long-term achievement. Second, self-compassion can be key when you have to face challenging times. More often than not, you are your harshest critic. But being too hard on yourself can result in resignation, falsely believing that you're just not good enough. Instead, try being as compassionate with yourself as you might be with a friend. Mentally strong people are comfortable being alone and use meditation to become more resilient. Nobody is perfect, yourself included. Be kind towards your own weaknesses. That will help you develop a realistic view of what's possible or not. At lesson number 11, we'll have a closer look at how mentally strong people handle alone time. Okay, now back to Morin's counseling office. This time we're sitting with Vanessa, who has a very particular problem. Despite being exhausted from busy work days, she had a hard time falling asleep. It feels like she can't turn off her mind. Her thoughts were racing hour after hour, pondering situations of the day or worrying about tasks to come. During the day, she was working as quite the successful real estate agent, always on the go, always on. Morin asked her how often she just sat down by herself, doing nothing and giving her thoughts some space. To which she replied with, never, why would I? Being alone and winding down is not something that ranks high on most people's priority list. Some people find it unproductive, others outright scary. They're uncomfortable with silence and solitude. They pack their calendar with social events, and when they're actually by themselves, they're on their phone or let the TV fill their apartments with background noises. But as mentally strong people know, they're missing out on something. Of course, too much alone time can be detrimental, especially if it comes with the feeling of loneliness. But studies show that solitary skills correlate with increased mental well-being, life satisfaction, and better stress management. Maybe most importantly, being by yourself helps you to recharge your batteries. So how do you get more comfortable with yourself and your thoughts? It's easy to regard alone time as unimportant and disposable. So to really make time for yourself, you should schedule a date with just yourself. Put it into your calendar and tell family and friends you won't be able to see them during this time. Once you've carved out your alone time, find something that you enjoy doing by yourself. Be aware though, TV, social media, and scrolling through YouTube for cat videos doesn't count here. Instead, give your thoughts and desire to self-reflect the room it deserves. You can take up journaling, for example. Also, meditation and mindfulness are the best known methods to quiet your mind and find a sense of peace. And by the way, that's what Vanessa did too. She made it a habit to make some time for meditation and mindfulness practices in the evening. Many people have an entitlement mentality, but strong people concentrate on giving rather than taking. Her racing thoughts slowed down considerably. And before she knew it, she was lying in bed, sleeping like a baby. 
All right, link number 12 already. Here we'll find out how to avoid the pitfalls of entitlement. Lucas was by no means popular among his co-workers. Even though he was fresh out of college and just starting out, he behaved like a know-it-all. He constantly told his more experienced co-workers how he would do it. He thought of himself as an extremely valuable employee who deserved a promotion into a leadership position. But instead of promoting him, Lucas's boss told him to tone it down. His co-workers got annoyed by his bossy behavior. They felt like he's acting a bit, well, entitled. Even though that sounds far from relatable, we all have a little bit of Lucas inside us. To some degree, we're all inclined to believe that the world owes us something. Here's the problem. The more you think you are deserving something, the less likely it will become that you will actually earn it. If you think that the world owes you, you'll just demand it instead of putting in the effort. On top of that, unrealistic expectations about what you should get is a real turnoff for the people around you. If we sense that someone is mostly taking and never giving, well, that will make us avoid this very person. So how do you get over your sense of entitlement? Most importantly, you should become aware of it. Feeling that the world owes you doesn't mean you're walking through life like a princess. Most of us show more subtle forms of entitlement. It's mostly hidden in your thought patterns. If you believe there's something exceptional about you, if you think a law doesn't apply to you because it's stupid, or if you simply think, life isn't fair, I deserve better than this, then these are signs of an entitled attitude. So instead, let's try some humility for a change. For starters, let's acknowledge that you have weaknesses too. Yes, I know, hard to grasp, but for real, you are not perfect. Like everybody else, you have shortcomings, insecurities, and traits that make you less of a prince charming. And by the way, that's perfectly fine. Also, let's receive critical feedback with some more humbleness, shall we? Since we're not perfect, the other person probably has a point. We might not agree entirely, but dismissing this person as stupid isn't helpful either. After all, that's what Lucas managed to do as well. He realized what kind of unfavorable impression he left with his co-workers and made a pledge to change. He stopped assuming that he knew everything better and grew open to learn more from those around him. Mentally strong people recognize that achievements take time and that progress isn't always immediately apparent. And who knows, with this attitude, he might earn the promotion after all. So you made it all the way to the last lesson, number 13. This one is about how mentally strong people commit to the long haul. If there's one weakness that Marcy had, it was her notorious impatience. When her kids or co-workers wouldn't comply with her pace, she'd say, I'm not getting any younger. She'd read dozens of self-help books, but was disappointed when they didn't magically change her life overnight. She abandoned therapy just after a few sessions because she didn't see the immediate results that she wanted. What she was desperately looking for was a shortcut, a magic pill that would eliminate her dissatisfaction with life. Unfortunately, as mentally strong people know, this pill doesn't exist. But if instant gratification becomes an overall expectation, you're going to have some problems in your life. The hard truth is change is hard and progress is not always immediately apparent. The question is how you handle this. If you're like Marcy, you might get discouraged easily and abandon your efforts prematurely. This means you'll never reap those special benefits that only come from a long-term commitment. Some things like an education, an important career step, or an artistic breakthrough only come after years of hard, unrewarding work and perseverance. The first step of embracing the long haul is to create realistic expectations. If you expect quick and painless success, you're setting yourself up for disappointment and frustration. Also, beware of fixed and unshakable deadlines for your goals. While it's good to have an approximate idea of when you'd like to finish, making it an all-or-nothing situation can certainly backfire, as we've heard before. And then, practice perseverance. Try to abstain from instant gratification more often. Say no to the cookie or the impulse online shopping. But no matter how self-disciplined you are, you will also need some moments of accomplishment. 